In this problem, we're going to use our vector component approach and the relative motion equation to solve a couple of problems. Starting, a boat measures its speed as 35 kilometers per hour north 10 degrees east relative to the water. So here's our boat. And he's trying to go north 10 degrees east, so he's sort of going like that in the water. A current flowing from the south with a from the south with a speed of 15 meters per second. So there's some current that's coming from the south, so that means it's going up like this, so it's going to push the boat even further up at 15 meters per second. This one was 35 kilometers per hour. Determine this uh, boat speed relative to the water. Well, that's actually a mistake, obviously, because this is the speed relative to the water right here. So let's make this problem interesting and say the boat's speed relative to the earth. Now the first thing we're going to notice about this problem is we got mixed units. We need to be careful. I'm going to change these kilometers per hour to meters per second because it's a more standard physics unit. Although for this particular problem, you could convert the meters per second to kilometers, hour to kilometers per hour if you wanted. So 35 kilometers per hour going to meters in one kilometer there are a thousand meters and changing the hours which are on the bottom to seconds in one hour there are 3600 seconds so this works out to 9.72 meters per second now I've got something going straight north, it said from the south, so if it was coming from the south that means it's going north. That's something to be aware of with these questions. The from the phrasing means that it's actually going in the other direction, like from the south would be going north, or from the east, if it was in the east, it would be going west. Um, so we got a north we got a north part and we got a guy that's north and east. Obviously we can't combine those directly, they're not in a straight line. So we've got to find out the components of this vector. So, 9.72 north then east in 10 degrees where we started. This is my adjacent side, this is my opposite side, so this side is going to be 9.72 sine 10. So that works out to 1.69 meters per second. In the adjacent side, or the coast side, 9.72, cos 10. We'll work it to 9.57 meters per second. So, the equation here is that the velocity of the object relative to the earth is equal to the velocity of the object relative to the water, in this case, this could be any general frame, right, plus the velocity of the water relative to the earth. How fast you're going, plus how fast the thing that you're on top of is going to get the total speed. I can do this mathematics separately in the north and east direction the velocity of the object relative to the water in the north direction is right here 9.57 meters per second and in the east direction is 1.69 meters per second I got that number from right here so this is the velocity of the object relative to the water clearly and then the water relative to the earth again it said from the south or north 15 meters per second. So that is the velocity of the water relative to the earth at 15 meters per second. That's sort of an unreasonably fast current, but we'll ignore that for now. And if it's going straight north, that means in the east direction it's zero. So to get my velocity of the object relative to the earth, I'm essentially totaling these vectors. 9.757 plus 15 works it to 24.57 meters per second in the north direction and 1.69 plus 0 is going to work out to 
meters per second in the east direction. And so if I go to recombine my vector, I'm going north, then I'm going east, 24.57 meters per second in 1.69 meters per second. I'm going to have to, to total these things, I'm going to have to use my Pythagorean resultant here. I'm going to have to get my hypotenuse. So h squared equals a squared plus b squared. 606.66 square rooted 24.63 we can make an interesting observation here notice that when one of the components of the recombining vector is much bigger than the other component 24 is much bigger than 1 then the resulting total is pretty darn close to the bigger one See, it was 24.57, it's gone up to 24.63. It's a very minor change. Um, and that's because if we look at this triangle, this side and this side, they're not the same, but they're pretty close. That's, uh, that's just something that's going to happen a fair amount in problems, so I guess it's worth recognizing. On the other hand, when those two things are close, that does not make the angle necessarily unnoticeably small. Uh, here I've got my opposite and my adjacent, so 1.69 over 24.57. So I've got an angle of 3.9 degrees. So my velocity of my object relative to the Earth is equal to 24.63 north 3.9 degrees east. And remember, I went north, then east, so that's how I write my heading. See, north, then east, and my angle is where I start. A plane is flying 500 kilometers per hour west relative to the air. The velocity of the plane relative to the air is 500 kilometers per hour west. However, the GPS shows the plane's actual velocity is 515 kilometers per hour west, 10 degrees south. Note here we use the term GPS, Global Positioning System. That is going to be measuring the plane's speed relative to the Earth. GPS doesn't know if you're in the air, or if you're on the ground, or what you're doing, so it just tells you where you are relative to the Earth, relative to the globe, if you will. Now here we have 500 kilometers per hour and 515 kilometers per hour. You might be tempted to change both of these numbers to meters per second, and there's nothing really wrong with doing that. But what you will probably uh, notice if you do it is that it wasn't, wasn't particularly helpful. Like your, your end answer is going to end up being the same. Since they're both in kilometers per hour and we're just combining them, we're not using any other physics equations or physics variables, we can just leave them in kilometers per hour and not worry about it. Now there is a little bit of a trick here. If I try and imagine this diagram, the plane's trying to go west. And it's actually ending up going a little bit west-south. It's this vector that we're interested in right here. Usually what happens is we go like this and this and then we look for the total, right? 1, 2, and we're looking for 1 plus 2. But in this problem right here, we've got 1 and we got 1 plus 2, so it's 2 that we're looking for. It's a little bit different from usual. From using the formula, 
the velocity of the plane relative to the earth is equal to the velocity of the plane as it is in the air plus the velocity of the air relative to the earth. You can think of that as the wind. And so here we have this and this and this is the thing we're missing. Before we get too carried away with what that means, let's just go to the simple thing here and break this 515 kilometers per hour into its components. So it goes west, then south, 10 degrees, goes where we started, and it's 515 big. So this is our adjacent side, which means it gets our cosine. That works out to 507.2 kilometers per hour. And then this is our sine side here. This is our opposite. So 515 sine 10. And if you want to call that negative because it's in the south direction, that's fine. Or if you want to treat south as positive, that's fine. I said a while ago, I'm always going to treat north and east as positive, so I'm going to treat both of these guys as negatives. So in my north, in my east direction, I can solve this problem separately. The velocity of the plane relative to the air, remember we said it's going straight west. So what that means is that it's zero in the north direction and minus 500 kilometers per hour in the west direction. The velocity of the plane relative to the earth we have as in the north-south direction negative 89 kilometers per hour. Remember that negative just means south. And negative 507.2 kilometers per hour east. So what we're interested in is the velocity of the wind or the air relative to the earth. If I go back to this equation, I can solve it for the thing that I'm interested in. If I move the VPA over to the other side, VPE minus VPA, or the velocity of the plane to the earth minus the velocity of the plane to the air, that's going to be tell. That's going to ask what portion of this velocity is associated with just the wind pushing the plane around. So that's an equation I can use to get what I want. So I'm going to get minus 89 minus 0 in this case, right? I'll, I'll write that out just to make sure that that's clear. So I'm going to use the fact that the velocity of the plane relative to the earth minus the velocity of the plane relative to the air is equal to the velocity of the wind. So minus 89 minus 0, this is in kilometers per hour. And on this side, minus 507.2 kilometers per hour minus negative 500 so minus 89 and this works out to 7.2 kilometers per hour. Now when recombining these things, it's not that critical, but when recombining these things, uh, negative, there, sorry. I'm going to put the bigger one first, so negative 89 and then negative 7.2. I always, um, I always do that. Usually you want to put the larger component first. It's sort of the more polite thing to do. It's an, again, it's not critical, it's not wrong if it's the other way, it's just the sort of normal thing to do. So, I have my right angle triangle, I have to recombine. So 
still using the Pythagorean result. I'm just going to jump into the answer here. I'm going to get 89.7. So that's 89 squared plus 7.2 squared square rooted. And then to get my angle, that's my opposite over my adjacent. You'll notice when I do these that I ignore the sine. And then I get to the answer without, um, or I once I get the answer, I interpret its direction carefully using my triangle. I don't have to include the signs in these equations. In fact, if you do use the signs in these equations, every once in a while something funny might happen. So it's kind of best to not do the signs and to just look at your overall triangle when trying to figure out the answer. So that works out to 4.63 degrees, and that is, I went south 4.63 degrees towards the west. So the velocity of the air relative to the earth, or if you prefer, I like to think of it as the velocity of the wind, is 89.7 kilometers per hour south 4.63 degrees west. So that's using the component method to solve relative motion problems. We're going to do a couple more, uh, I'm going to do another video now where we're going to see more relative motion problems solved, but we won't bother with the component method because we'll see how we can use triangles to solve them more directly without getting to this.